Hello everyone, uh, this is Anisho and today I'll be explaining the CPU implementation. Coming to the CPU architecture, uh, this is the proposed design for the CPU architecture which we will be going to use uh, to implement and explain the HDL code for the CPU. Here in the given diagram, uh, the CPU consists of several uh, logic gates such as the A register, the ALU, the D register, the PC or the uh, program counter and MUX or multiplexer. Also, we already have uh, the knowledge about most of these logic gates from the previous tasks uh, which will make it quite easier for us to implement the CPU. Now, coming to the first step, uh, uh, that is to derive the API for the CPU. The API basically specifies the chip name, the input and output pins and the function of the CPU. For now, let's uh, not jump into the logic gates and focus on starting with a, an abstraction of this chip by having the logic gates in the diagram so we can identify the input and the output pins of the CPU. In this diagram, we can clearly see that there are three inputs coming into the CPU from different sources in the computer. The in M input, which is basically the value of the currently selected data memory register and is the value that the CPU uses to perform its operation. The instruction input, uh, which is basically the value of the selected instruction memory register, uh, which can be either an A instruction or a C instruction. In uh, the diagram used for implementing the hack computer, we can clearly see that the CPU is further connected to the instruction memory and the data memory. Here, we see that the CPU uh, takes instruction input from the instruction memory and also takes the value of the selected data memory register as another input. The reset input tells us whether we bring uh, the CPU back to its initial state, uh, which is basically uh, the start of operation of the CPU again. Now coming to the outputs that are connected to the data memory and the instruction memory as well. Uh, they are write M, out M, address M and PC or program counter. Going back to the CPU architecture, uh, we can uh, see that the ALU gives the output which is returned to the data memory. Uh, to do this, the ALU must specify things like content uh, that the CPU is going to write into the data memory which is stored in out M. Uh, next, uh, the address of the write operation in the data memory, which is uh, the place where we put the content in the data memory. Finally, the output that allows the CPU to write the content to the data memory, write M. Also, the, CP, uh, the PC holds the address of the next instruction, which will then used by the CPU in the next cycle. With that, we are clear with the inputs and the outputs of the CPU architecture. Uh, now, let's implement the HDL code of the CPU. I'll be explaining the HDL code for the CPU uh, provided in the task resources and I'll be doing so in parts uh, to go into details. Here, here we uh, have the header section specifying the CPU interface uh, which consists of the chip name and the names of the input and the output pins. Uh, for the CPU chip, the name will obviously be the CPU. Uh, here, uh, in this code, the input uh, pins will be named as 16-bit uh, in M, 16-bit uh, instruction, uh, reset, uh, while the output pins will be named as 16-bit out M, write M, 15-bit address M, and 15-bit PC. Now, coming to the parts section of the HDL code, uh, here we have three different gates. Uh, the NOT gate, the AND gate, and the MUX16 gate. They all allow the CPU to perform specific operations. Uh, first, uh, there are two types of input coming into the CPU uh, from the instruction memory. They are A instructions and C instructions. So, what are A instructions? The, the symbolic sentence for the A instructions are add value. Uh, it is either a number or a symbol. If the value is a number, then the A register's contents are set to the value. If the value is a symbol, then the contents of the A register are set to the value that the symbol points to. Again, what are C instructions? The C instructions uh, have a symbolic syntax of destination is equal to computation semicolon jump. Uh, these instructions performs computation on the CPU, which is stored into a destination or a memory location. 
it may also tell the CPU to jump to another instruction memory address which is pointed by the value or the symbol. Coming back to the CPU HDL, uh, in the first line, the NOT gate is used to tell whether the instruction memory uh, into the CPU from the instruction memory is an A instruction. But before that, the CPU decodes uh, the 16-bit uh, instruction into an opcode and a 15-bit value. If the opcode is 0, then the instruction is an A instruction, whereas if the opcode is 1, then the instruction is C instruction. If instruction is A instruction, then the CPU takes the speci uh, specified 15-bit value and stores the value in the A register. In the architecture, we know that the A register can be fed by either instruction or the ALU output. Again, if it is C instruction, uh, it performs the computation in the ALU and the ALU outputs, uh, output is fed to the A register. We use an AND gate uh, to determine whether the instruction is C instruction. Again, we use a MUX16 gate to select whether the instruction or the ALU output is stored, stored in the A register. Coming into the next part, we have an OR gate here. Uh, the load bit in the A register uh, will be 1 if either the A instruction or the ALU output is fed to A register. Also, the A register stores uh, the value that is fed there. Uh, it takes in the output A reg in from the MUX and the output load A from the OR gate as its inputs and gives the output A out which generates the content or the value currently stored inside the register. Next, we again use a MUX16 gate which takes the output of A register and value selected in the data memory register in M. Uh, this will select which one to output, A or M. Either A or M will be fed into the ALU depending on the 12-bit instruction value. An AND gate is used to see whether the ALU output is loaded to the D register. The D register is used to load and store the value from the D register from the ALU. Finally, coming to the ALU, it basically computes the value on two inputs, which here would be the value stored in the D register and the value of either A or M register and gives the output. It has uh, input control bits such as ZX, NX, ZY, NY, F and N0 which are indicators of which function is computed on the two inputs to give the output. The output control bits such as ZR and NG determines the properties of the result. Next, coming to the two OR16 and the AND gate uh, sets the ALU outputs in an order uh, to successfully write on the data memory. The first determines the address of the write operations. The second determines the content of the data memory and finally the AND gate outputs the value. At the end, the PC contains the address of the instruction to be fetched next. In these lines, the load bit of the PC are determined by the jump bits and the ALU outputs. So basically, they determine the jump condition and checks the ALU output to see if the conditions are met. If the instruction is C instruction and the conditions are met, the PC is loaded with the value that will ask the CPU to jump to the specified value or symbol. If the PC is not loaded, then it is incremented or that is it will be reading the next instruction. With this, the HDL code will end. Thank you. Hope it helped.